Hello, my friends at Emmett O'Neill Public Library. I'm sorry I can't be there with you in person, but that's no reason you shouldn't enjoy some fairy tale science. Hope you like it. So there's a character that makes quite a few appearances in several fairy tales, and that something is a frog. So I decided a good idea would be to introduce you to one of my frogs. This is a pixie frog. They come from Africa. Pixie means small, so even though he's a pretty small frog, he's still very cool to meet. So, here we go. Wait a minute. That's not small, right? So, the reason why in Africa there's two types of bullfrogs. There's the pixie frog and the goliath frog. Goliath means huge, pixie means small. So, this is a small version of an African bullfrog. He is glorious. How cute is he? So cute. All right, so let's talk a little bit about a frog's life cycle, which is very, very cool. So the mother frog will lay eggs in a body of water, river, stream, could be your swimming pool. And then those eggs hatch and they look like weird little fish and they're called tadpoles. They have gills like fish, which means they can breathe underwater. Over time, they develop arms, legs, and they lose their tail. And then guess what? Their gills change to lungs. So just like us, when we go underwater, we have to come back up for air. Adult frogs have to do the same thing. They also have very cool eyes. Look at that. So beautiful. And they have what's called a nictating membrane. It's like a built-in swim goggle that will cover their eyes each time they go underwater. So this particular frog has teeth right there. So uh, they are a carnivore. Uh, they eat a lot of insects. So if they only ate insects, they would be called an insectivore. But guess what? Since they have those teeth, they can actually eat small rodents like mat mice or rats. So they do hide out and, and they do that. So um, this is Henry VIII, by the way. He's not a prince. He's a king. And um, he is a male, I can tell, because his belly right there is orange. So giving you another very cool look at Henry VIII. Now let's talk about a specific fairy tale. And that fairy tale is Snow White. <laughs> All right, so the fairy tale Snow White. Snow White is uh, about a beautiful girl and a wicked queen and seven dwarfs. So what I want to focus on is snow and snow white and then also um, the queen's use of the mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of all? And then also on one of the seven dwarfs, Sleepy. We're going to see if we can't wake Sleepy up using some science. So the snow part of Snow White. I'm going to make some snow. It's not real snow, though, because snow has to be cold and it has to have water in it. This does have water in it, but it's not cold. It could be hot water. It could be cold water. So not real snow. But I'm going to use a powder. That powder is called sodium polyacrylate, and it's super absorbent. That means it soaks up water. And as it soaks up water, each piece of the powder expands or gets larger. Uh, there are actually two types of sodium polyacrylate. There's the type called instant snow, which I'm gonna do an experiment with that. And then there's another type, and that type soaks up the water, locks it in a gooey solid, and you find that inside of disposable baby diapers. So check out this cool experiment using sodium polyacrylate as instant snow. Enjoy.
Mirrors are shiny, smooth surfaces that reflect almost all the light that hits them. Light's return from a mirror is called reflection. When you look in a mirror, the light on you reaches the mirror and reflects from the mirror surface. Jedi Mickey Mouse's image is reflected back, retracing the path it traveled to get there. And in doing that, you see Jedi Mickey Mouse front to back. All right, now something that you can do at home. If you have an old CD, it has a very cool reflective surface on it. And if you use a flashlight or take it out in the sunshine, you can take a white piece of paper, reflect the sun's rays or the flashlight light off of your CD, and it'll break up the spectrum and you can create rainbows. Let's have a look. Alright, the seven dwarfs. My personal favorite is actually Sleepy. Who doesn't like to sleep? I'm sure some of you, but most grown-ups like to sleep. And teenagers even more. So here is Sleepy, right here. Isn't he cute? And he's, of course, Sleepy. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, get him a little bit more active, get him to wake up, and what I'm going to use is two things. I'm going to use some friction and a balloon to create static electricity. If you've ever jumped on a trampoline and your hair stood up or you slid down a plastic slide and your hair stood up, that's an example of static electricity. So you need two things to create static electricity. You need molecules. Molecules make up matter. Ma matter makes up everything. But atoms make up molecules. So once you have those, which we do, and you add friction, you can create static electricity. So I have a balloon right here and what I want to do is uh, generate some friction. I'm going to do that by rubbing it on my hair. So an example of friction, let's put the balloon over here, put your hands together, rub your hands. Are your hands getting warmer? I bet they are because you're generating energy in the form of friction. So we're going to do that and see if anything interesting happens with my hair. Ooh. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating opposite charges between my hair and the balloon. And now my hair and the balloon are like best friends. They want to hang out together. Opposite charges attract. So that's going to help me to generate the static electricity to maybe wake up sleepy. So let's try again. Oh, he's totally waking up. And sometimes you can rub it on your shirt, too. Oh. That's some fairy tale music for you. So we woke him up using static electricity because we had opposite charges. Opposites attract. So suddenly now the balloon and Sleepy are also best friends. We'll try it one more time. Friction. Making friction. <sighs> cool, huh? Alrighty, my friends at Emma O'Neill Public Library. Did you like it? I hope you did. I also hope that you have a super science-filled summer filled with tons and tons of reading. And I look forward to seeing you again in person. Bye!